Hello everyone, this is Carl, and this presentation is a sample of the kind of presentation you can give to your end user clients and train them on some good practices for your business. This is a truly great opportunity to get in front of your clients, make it really clear that you're all facing in the same direction and you're on the same side and that your job is to make them safer, make their systems run more efficiently, and therefore help them to be more profitable. The handouts are available. There's a zip file that includes the slides in PDF format, but I've also given you the slides in a PowerPoint presentation so that you can customize it. This was recorded July 2016, so the examples are gonna get out of date very quickly in IT and in uh, antivirus you know, the, the wars <laughs> that go on. So <clears throat> feel free to use these resources and then go ahead and, you know, look at what you might want to do with your clients. And I personally don't charge for this. I give a couple of hours of training every quarter to my clients who are on managed services or on one of our cloud five pack um, systems. So I'd like to get in front of their people, have a nice little handout that, that tells them, here's the things that you should avoid, and make this presentation, and then answer their questions. A piece of this is intended to scare them a bit, but I'm not a real big fan of the just scare people and they'll do what they're supposed to do mentality. I don't think that works personally, and I think that these people are smart. They're smart enough to make enough money to be able to pay me to be there. So I figure, you know, they, they have no interest in destroying their own data, destroying their own systems. People do have to have this balance between usability and security. And so that's what a lot of this is about. So I'm going to give you an example of what I do in front of clients. And this is the presentation that I actually give. I've most recently given this within the last month at a client office. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about security and in particular what you can do every day to be more secure and to make sure that the company maintains security and profitability. So we're going to look at first of all how you get tickets into our system so that if you have any questions and so forth you'll be able to do that as efficiently as possible. We're going to talk about email security, antivirus, a particular thing about why you are not allowed to be a local administrator on your computers, and then a little bit about how we register your software so that you understand how that relationship works. First of all, Small Biz Thoughts has a ticketing system. In the lower right-hand corner of your computer screen, you're going to see a little icon. It looks like a lifesaver from a boat, and that's where you should put tickets into our system. Everyone in the company, everyone in your company, is authorized to enter a ticket into our system. Now here's what that means. If it's covered by your managed service agreement, I'm just going to fix it. So somebody from my company will come in, we'll take care of it, we will let you know when the ticket is closed. If it's going to cost you money, we won't work it right away. What we'll do is we will get together with your office manager and we'll coordinate that service. So don't worry about putting tickets in the system. We need to have complete visibility of everything that's wrong with your system so we can fix it as quickly as possible. If that costs money, of course, we're going to ask your office manager's permission first before we spend that money. So feel free to put in tickets. Just understand that if it's not covered labor, then there might be um, a discussion about when we're going to actually take care of that. Remember also that some of you may not be aware of changes that are coming in the office. So if, for example, we're ordering new machines this quarter, then we might not fix some things on old machines because in another month or so you're going to get a new machine. So if you have questions or you don't know how to use that ticketing system, please let me know. You do have to register for it, but, but I've registered your email address. So all you really have to do is try to create a ticket, and when it says, hey, what's your password, you can ask for a password reset. And if you have any questions, just let me know. 
So in terms of regular maintenance, just a reminder, I want everyone to log off at night. That means that you want to log out of your computer. Do not shut it down. So log it off, but that way there are no files open, there's no programs running. And that allows us to get a clean backup on the server as well as a clean scan of the system. It allows us to update programs. And if, for whatever reason, we have an update that requires us to reboot, we know that we can reboot and you won't lose any work because you didn't have any files open. So just remember that at night, close all the programs, log off, don't shut down, do not power your computer off. All right, so let's look at viruses and let me just give you the, the view from 30,000 feet and then we'll talk a little bit about some specifics with email. One of the big threats you hear a lot about today in the news is something called CryptoLocker. And the most important thing you have to know about CryptoLocker is it needs your permission to run. Okay, so something's going to pop up on your screen and you have to click and, and give it permission. Now, there's something called social engineering. And basically what that means is that they're going to trick you into clicking something. They're going to tell you this is a statement from your bank and you have to open it right now or they're going to tell you that you have a virus and you need to run a scan or that you have something illegal and and they want you to pay a fine or whatever it might be they're trying to get you to click on something and I have limited your permissions to destroy your own computer to the extent that I can but nothing is perfect and so far we have been lucky someday we will not be lucky but for now we've been we've been lucky but uh, largely comes down to you have to not panic when something pops up on your screen that you're not expecting you need to just have the presence of mind that you don't click anything if it if it remotely feels abnormal do not click and here's the thing about social engineering they're going to program everything they can to trick you. And they have some social engineering where they're going to try to emotionally trick you. The combination is very dangerous unless you slow down and take a second and when something pops up, think about it. Remember, they can make those buttons mean anything they want. So when it says C files, what's really going on in the code is, please infect my computer. The one that says proceed to pay, that's got a thing that says, please infect my computer, right? Everything that you could click on is going to try to infect your computer. So don't click on things. And we'll talk specifically about how you get rid of this without clicking. So CryptoLocker is a virus where once you infect your computer, what it does is it encrypts all the, what it, considers to be the important files, the files where it's Word docs and Excel docs and databases and that sort of stuff, anything that, that, that might be useful for you, it's going to encrypt. And it also is going to then send you a note that says, hey, if you want to get your files back, you got to send us some money, right? So here's this hospital that paid thousands of dollars in Bitcoin to the hackers. Now, Bitcoin is this kind of gray market way of of transferring money that's untraceable so far. And even though the government cracked down on the people who created the CryptoLocker virus, it, the code is out there. If you wanted to, you could go find the CryptoLocker construction kit and create your own CryptoLocker or some variant of that and send it out to people and start collecting money from the people who are encrypting things. If there's any good news, it's that these people actually do give you the codes to unlock your computer and, un and get your files back. And the reason they do that is because if you didn't, and that's sort of most of the time, 95% of the time probably, if you didn't get your files back, you would not be motivated to give them money. So they want people to know that you actually do get your files back if you get, give them the money. Just remember, that a lot of these things are going to be visible to your spam filter. Absolutely not everything, but a lot of it is visible. So if you have any questions, if you have any doubts, just 
right click on something if there's a file that you're questionable about or an attachment right click on it and scan it with your antivirus and you know an executable is certainly not going to come through your email so we've taken care of that but you have to figure out how you're going to keep yourself from getting caught out in the wild so just remember this is a very dangerous thing if we have a working backup and everything is working the way it's supposed to we will not we will probably not end up paying them money and and getting any of these you know files decrypted because we're going to restore from an image but you never know it could happen the day after there's a problem with the backup right so uh, it may also be the case that a, a restore is going to cost more money than what these guys are asking right so it, it, we haven't actually ever faced this situation with a client but when the time comes we have to make decisions and again be rational but you have the job of making sure that you don't click on things and don't spread this within your system. So here's kind of a view of the way that your security works. <clears throat> we maintain a firewall that does everything it can to block BitTorrent traffic and executables and, you know, bad stuff. There's, there's a limit to what the firewall can do, but we are doing everything we can. We're doing deep packet inspection, which means that even when traffic is encrypted, you know, everything on the internet is now HTTPS. Well, we're opening those packets to look and see what's inside of them. So we're doing what we can at the firewall. We have an antivirus on the server. So when you save a file to the server, it is automatically scanned at that point. We have an antivirus on your desktop. So if you download a file, it's going to be scanned. You may even see the case where you literally download a file and it has been removed from your system by the time you browse to that folder to look at it. You'll get a little pop-up that says, I've deleted this file. But that, that's how you're going to know that it was infected, is that you're never going to see it in a perfect world. Again, this has worked. This has always worked so far. Someday, uh, you know, in the, in the race between the good guys and the bad guys, someday the bad guys are going to be one step ahead. So you just have to be careful. Uh, and then we have patches, fixes, and updates. And I'll tell you, this is, the, this is where many, many people fall down. If you don't give us access to your machine, we can't put in patches, fixes, and updates. And what, the reason I use that term, patches, fixes, and updates, put it all together in one big block, it's the combination of those things that keeps you safe. You need the latest version of software so that anything where a virus is able to get in that was patched a year ago, well, you don't have that version. You got the new version and you're not going to have those issues, right? So your operating system, your software, all the programs that you run, we want to make sure all of those are up to date, not just Microsoft, but Adobe and Java and everything else. There's so many ways that the bad guys can get in, and they rely on the fact that some people don't patch their systems. So a lot, to be honest, a lot of the people that you hear about getting viruses is because they're using old versions of Office, old versions of Adobe Acrobat, old versions of JavaScript, right? So they've got systems with known holes in them that the bad guys can get through. And the viruses out in the wild essentially never go away. So if you've got a, a hole in your system and it gets in contact with a, a five-year-old virus that can exploit that hole, well, then you're going to get an infection. And so that's why with managed services, we come in and put in all the updates for all of your products all the time. So if you were ever to run an update on your system, you're going to see that it's completely up to date and no further patches are required. And that's because we have taken care of that automatically in the middle of the night. So, of course, again, there can be a day where that fails. There can be an update that doesn't get applied, right? That's, that's our problem to deal with. So, again, the world is never perfect, but we're going to do what we can to patch those holes. <clears throat> Finally, we have policies, and policies are literally either written or spoken, but they are, are us saying, you have to change your password. 
you can't do this, you must do that. And we don't have a lot of hard rules for you to follow, but you really do have to follow the guidelines that we give you because at the end of the day, it comes down to your behavior. If you choose to infect your system, you can. Now, the way that we've set it up, it's going to be really hard for you to infect your system. <laughs> but you can if you try hard enough. So just, just be aware of that behavior. And I know that this is going to be on the top of your mind for the next 24 hours. And after that, you have to make a conscious point of remembering not to panic. So in terms of email, you see things like this, and I know that you've seen them. Wait, oh, yeah, you got a problem. you got to confirm your account. And you go, oh, okay, I wonder, wonder what's going on there. And they want you to click. And they will tell you things like, we've denied you access, or you have to you know, go in and check this out, or you have to reauthorize, or whatever. It's going to sound very official. They copy the look and feel of the people that they're copying and they steal their logos and a lot of times there are typos in this and so I, you know why they don't um, in fact here you see where it says it's temporarily limited well it's really a capital I it's not limited it's I imited you know weird stuff like that is probably there because these people are amateurs at writing or sometimes they're written in other countries and it's translated and whatever Little things like that tell you that this didn't come from PayPal, but it doesn't matter because it's very simple to ignore this, literally delete this, and then you initiate the contact. If you think that there's some chance that this might be legitimate, then open up a browser, log into your PayPal account, and look around. If it's blocked, if there's a problem, if there's an issue, there's going to be a message there. Right. So so never, ever, ever respond to this kind of stuff in an email unless it's something that, you know, it happens every three days and it's part of your standard routine and you know for a fact that it's safe. If you ever get anything in email, don't click on those kinds of things, but instead open up a web browser, go to your bank, go to your PayPal, go to whatever the account is and deal with it from there. Remember, for the most part, these people are not going to send you anything important in an email that you're not expecting. So they will, sometimes you'll get a thing that says, you know, you have new documents and you have to approve them from your workers' comp or whatever. That's cool. Most of those, they will give you a simple link to a website. Or if it's bad, then it's going to look like a simple link to their website, but it's actually going to take you somewhere else. Again, close that email, open up your browser, you initiate the connection to their web server, you know that it's safe. And then I would just tell people, don't open email from people you don't know. If it's important, they will find a way to get a hold of you. And don't open attachments unless you ask that specific person to send that to you. A lot of these email systems, they're able to look at your contacts and send you something that looks like it came from somebody you know. It didn't really, but it looks like that unless you investigate. So if, if you didn't ask me to send you a file and you get an email that looks like it came from me and it's got an attachment and it says, this is really urgent, this is a security update, you better apply this right now, delete it. it you know, I always tell people, I don't even open attachments from my mother, right? So if you get an email attachment that you were not asking that person to send you that thing, delete it. I actually have a brother who he probably spent five years randomly sending emails every once in a while and he'd say, oh my God, this is so funny, you gotta watch this. And, I'm, and I would just delete it and, and I would send him a note. I said, you know I'm never going to open that. I will not live long enough to open all the stupid crap you send me. So you're free to email me, but don't think that I'm going to double click on an attachment. It's just not going to happen. So when in doubt, delete. You can also initiate, again, don't respond, initiate an email to somebody and say, hey, Bob, did you just send me this document? Because I was totally not expecting that. And if he says, yes, that's me, okay, cool. Ask him to resend it and open that one. So again, you just have to slow down. You have to be careful. 
and every once in a while somebody you know you're you're in the middle of something that makes you susceptible to opening this email for example if you've got three different audits going on and somebody sends you something that says I need one more piece of uh, email or I need one more piece of information about something and it kind of looks official but it's a little bit off and you're not sure and you're in the middle of all this stuff and you're harried that's how they take advantage of you you know even if it's a one in a thousand opportunity that there's going to be a connection like that that's how social engineering works remember they're sending out tens of millions of emails a day so if they get one tenth of one percent of the people to click on it they have won the war so don't be in that category now in terms of links when you see links in an email or especially in a web browser um, you can click o or just uh, put your mouse over it just hover over it and down at the bottom you're gonna see where it actually goes and it might be totally legitimate or it might be that you know it says one thing up above but it goes to someplace completely different down below this happens to be a legitimate link right it's just it's going to a uh, an article on a website but sometimes up above it's going to say one thing and down below it'll say a different thing. So if again, if in doubt, just float over it. Some browsers will take a second and dig below the shortened link and give you the real uh, connection, but most of them won't. So the problem is today when you get even a very legitimate um, link on a website, you're, you don't know where it goes. And, and, and this is a really bad problem because obviously the bad guys can just shorten the link from evilvirusinfectedsite.com to owly slash, you know, gobbledygook, and you're not going to know the difference. So you have to be very careful about that. Um, also, I personally, I will be very happy to disable one of the features that should never have been invented in my opinion, and that is hiding extensions for commonly used file formats. Microsoft introduced this many years ago and it's just silly because it allows the bad guys to take a, a legitimate looking file and turn it into something very evil. So it looks like it's .jpg, but really it's jpeg.exe, which is executable. But if you hide the extensions, then it looks like a standard JPEG file. And so you might double click on that to open it. So just be aware of that. And again, if you want me to make these extensions visible, just ask, put in a ticket in the system. I'll be happy to do it for absolutely for free, but just be aware that those are out there and there's lots and lots and lots of hidden extensions that are executables. And uh, I'm gonna give you a list of those. So the ones that you probably are familiar with that where programs can actually run uh, are, you know, exe.com, uh, maybe JavaScript or Visual Basic, right? A lot of what, what the technical people know are some of the CMD and, and BAT um, and some others, but all of these are programs that can run scripts on your system. Right? They can either run a program or run a script. <clears throat> and macros in the, in the newer version of Office, which you all have, uh, it'll say DOCX as the extension for a Word document, for example. Or it'll be PPTX. And those have no macros. But if it has an M, it's got a macro. So DOCM is a Word document with macros. And you know, you've seen this where it says, oh, you have to enable the macros. No, you don't. If you don't need those macros or if that pops up and you weren't expecting it, again, close the program and virus scan it and you can even open a ticket and I'll be happy to come and take a look at it. Don't just blindly uh, enable those kinds of things because it popped up. One of the reasons why we only use the newer version of Office documents is that it, they didn't used to have a different designation for programs that had macros in them. And so the old version, DOC, um, could have macros in it. 
If you get the older versions of these, just remember you need to be a little more careful, although those macros may not run on the newer version of Office that you have, or it may ask you to enable macros and, uh, and go ahead and run it. Again, social engineering, they're, they're trying to get you to give them permission to run. When you give them permission to run, you have as much authority as, as you have on your own desktop, and so we limit that. If, uh, if something pops up and it says, warning, warning, you do not have an antivirus program, click here, we found 147,000 viruses on your system, never, ever, ever install that. You do have an antivirus. It's in the corner on your machine. It runs all the time. It scans every night, and it scans in real time as you're working. So never install anything or be tricked by something that pops up and says that there's a problem with your system. A lot of even legitimate but really poorly run sites have pop-ups that say, oh my god, you have to do this and this. A lot of times it's so frustrating. You go search for something and they say, hey, here's the quick fix. It's right here. And they're trying to sell you something and it looks legit, but really it's just an opportunity for you to buy something. That could just as easily be something where it looks legit, but they're trying to infect your computer. And you know how the any Windows window has a little X in the upper right-hand corner? Um, you should, to close things, you should hold down the Alt button and press F4, and that will close whatever window has the focus right now. So normally, if something pops up, Alt F4 is going to close that window, and that is much better than, than hitting the X. So never click on anything inside a window that pops up, because every single thing that you can click on inside that window could be the Yes button to install something and put viruses on your system. Instead, click the X if you have to, or use Alt F4 to just close down the window. And if you want to close down everything that's open, just keep hitting Alt F4 again and again. And uh, sometimes you will have to verify, yes, you really do want to close it or you want to save stuff or whatever. But um, Alt F4 closes virtually every program in Windows. It is by design since the introduction of Windows. So with all of these things, like, ah, what, what are all these things that pop up? You know, yes means yes, no means yes, stop means yes, continue means yes. Everything means yes. Everything that you click on means yes, please infect my computer. So again, Alt F4 is your friend. Now, in terms of policies, we have set up one cloud drive and it's the one that you all have mapped, and that's it. You are not authorized to put any company data on Dropbox, OneDrive, or anything other than the official site that we have authorized for your company. The reason is everything that's on the official site is virus scanned, it's encrypted, the traffic moves encrypted, it is stored encrypted, and we have a way to back it up to another location every night. If you don't put your data on that site, it's not safe and it's not backed up. So you're not authorized to have company data on your phone unless there's a business reason for it. You are not authorized to connect your phone to your email system unless it is approved at the, at the management level of your company. So. You're certainly welcome to put in a ticket that you want that. I need to get approval in order to do that. And the other thing is don't store anything on your C drive. If you temporarily feel like you need to put something on your C drive so that you can have fast access to a large program or whatever, I'm not going to argue with you on that. But you must cut and paste that to the cloud drive. Don't drag and drop. Don't leave it on your system. Don't copy it so that you'll come back later and delete it. When you're done, the way to get it back there is cut and paste. And that way you know exactly where it's going. And we know for a fact that it's no longer on your C drive. If you store things on your C drive, they are not backed up. They are not imaged. They are not 
secure and and part of you know the official company file storage so do not store things on your c drive put them in the cloud where they belong now you are not the administrator of your computer and in fact neither am i and what that means is that you cannot install programs on your system and i know we've had this issue for example you want to go to go to webinar and you want to you want to run that okay so if you need administrative privileges we have a process for you i've given the office manager a username and password so that when you need to do something for example you know legitimately you've gone to go to webinar and you're going to um, run their program it will pop up a little window and they'll say hey you need administrative privileges for this um, you you can say yes uh, to elevate your privileges but you do not have enough privileges to install that program and this is literally this is 90 percent of what's going to keep you from getting viruses because most of them have to install something and they have to have your permission to do that well you don't have the permissions to do that I don't even log on to your computer with an administrative account when the time comes when I need to install something a window is going to pop up for me the same as it does for you the username that you're going to use to elevate your privileges is the word caution c-a-u-t-i-o-n and there's a long gobbledygook 10 digit or 12 digit password that is changed every 30 days I'm only giving that to the office manager if you really need to do something I'd prefer that you put in a ticket and have us do it I understand that there are time constraints and that's not always convenient but when something pops up and says you need elevated privileges at a minimum you should think to yourself did I initiate this is this something sound that I started or did this pop up because I was browsing a website or pop up because I I was trying to do something with an attachment in email right again slow down think about it and the reason that the username is caution is I want you to literally take caution and be careful and think about it before you elevate privileges on that machine and the norm is our contract is that we are to install all programs on your machine and that includes viruses so if you install a virus on your computer then cleaning it up is not covered by managed services because you installed something and you're not authorized to so I know that sounds humorous but the truth is we are supposed to do the installations so if we install something and it's got a virus attached that's totally on us and there will be no charge to fix it all the way it's supposed to be so far again that hasn't happened <laughs> but you never know what the future holds so anyway the point is it's a little bit less convenient for you to operate this way but 99% of the time you don't need administrator privileges you don't need to operate that way you can open programs save programs and so forth so you have the privileges you need but uh, on the rare occasions when we're installing software then you need to get in touch with uh, small biz thoughts and we will take care of you so um, here's an example of what it's going to say is oh you need administrator privileges to do this in this case it's to delete a file but uh, it it could be anything so if it's to install something or whatever it's going to look just like this and say hey you need permissions and you can say continue but it's just going to pop up a window and ask you for a username and password okay so remember that and you know that's the kind of thing where we're just putting it up there in your face go slow and and be careful all right if there are any questions I'll be happy to take those and I'm gonna give you guys all a copy of these slides so you'll you'll have them to take with you and you'll have a list of all of those macros and uh, and extensions that are really bad so with that I will take any questions that anybody has all right so for the IT folks watching this as a sample presentation it may not be perfect but it's decent it gets you going it's certainly something that you can build on and I encourage you to have these policies and make these kinds of presentations with your clients it's really a great way to get in front of them and to build the relationship above and beyond simply 
um, being the person who fixes things and, and they only see you when stuff is broken. And then when you walk in the office, they go, oh, my, oh no, he's here again. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> so you want them to love you and you want them to see you as being somebody who's helping their team. So this is a step in that direction. And of course, you can send me an email. Just go to Small Biz Thoughts and um, uh, th there's all kinds of links there. And or just Carl Polichuk. It's, uh, it's K-A-R-L-P at smallbizthoughts.com. And I'd be happy to uh, take any feedback that you have on this. Thanks for tuning in today.